any other major life lessons along the way for someone that's looking to, you know, they're either starting or they're halfway through their journey. Any other major life lessons? Because again, 40 years, 50,000 transactions, you learn a thing or two. Well, the other thing that is, is sticks out in my head is I think sometimes seller financing, people, people are sort of taught, whether if you're at a real estate club or you're on online and Facebook and you're in some network, we sort of a little bit think seller financing is for substandard properties and substandard borrowers. You know, we, we mm-hmm. kind of th- get in our mind like, well, of course they had bad credit. That's why I seller finance that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, these limiting beliefs we put in ourselves. Exactly. So what I've learned is this. I've, if I've bought 2,000 portfolios of notes, I've looked at six or 8,000 portfolios. Mm-hmm. So I tried to look at the portfolios that I didn't buy and figure out what was wrong what, what what went wrong with their strategy that meant that I wasn't even willing to write a check and buy it? Mm-hmm. So here's what I've learned. I don't deal in any form of substandard real estate, right? Now, I don't deal in mansions necessarily, but I don't deal in substandard. So if it's really, if it's high risk neighborhoods or, you know, if it's land that, you know, people are, you know, a lot of people own or finance land or something like that. If it's undesirable land that people are not going to wake up and love, they're not going to pay you for it, yeah. right? Those are just, those are patterns that I saw. And so I learned that you start out with a good piece of property and then you start next with how to attract the buyer that you want. Mm-hmm. So if I was a bank and I ran a, an ad on Facebook or whatever today, and I said, you know, we loan money to unqualified people, then they'd be lined up out the door with people that my bank would not end up in being a good way if they made loans to those people. Mm-hmm. But if I said, if you've been, if you've been left behind and you're solid and you've got good down payment, then we'll figure out a way to make it work for you just because you didn't qualify for an institutional mortgage today. Mm-hmm. And so I learned that if you can stay in that mode, you're, pro- you're solving a problem that the public needs solved and you're going to wake up with a good bank. You're going to wake up with a bunch of people paying you back for a long time in the future. I used to deal, do a lot. Of, I've done a lot of land business also and um, with seller financing, a lot of it. And uh, so I learned that um, a guy told me something. He said, Eddie, if you'll have these disciplines, the business will be good to you a long time in the future. Yeah. Don't settle. Don't rush. Make good loans. Be it, be intentional. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really wise, but easy to overlook. Because we get hungry. We get desperate. We want to make a quick dollar sometimes. Well, and, and once again, you know, I, I, you know, you've got this incredible podcast, mm-hmm. you know. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My honor. Uh, and all these guys are watching this. So let me ask you a question. Sure. Did you... Did you get into this business to have a job or did you get in this business to build wealth? Got into this business to build a wealth and a legacy. So if that's the case, then you've got to go do something past just today. There's yeah. nothing wrong with transactional income. Mm-hmm. You know, I still flip some notes. You know, we've got a note buying shop and we buy notes and sometimes we just need to cash a check. Mm-hmm. I get cashing a check and breathing some oxygen into your business, right? Right. But But what we try to do is have a balance. My father-in-law had a great saying, okay, man that taught me this business. He said, Eddie, if your, if your net worth is not growing faster than your current income, you're going in the wrong direction. You want to elaborate on that? Well, I think you see a lot of people that are very focused on you know, I, I, I made half a million dollars last year or a million dollars last year, and I'm going to make a million six this year. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm thinking that they're, 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 the problem with the fact that the market's being good to the, particularly the high volume guys, right? The mm-hmm. smaller guys are not getting, they're not pulling this off as well as the high volume guys. Sure. They don't have their marketing in place as tight. Mm-hmm. They don't have their negotiation strategies as tight. So, you know, they're, they're competing with the wolves. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But if you're if all you're doing is growing transactional income, you're not working to your future. 
Right. You can you can structure the note business or part of your business related to notes and make money today and money over time. And then you've got this it'll be good to you a long time in the future concept. Right. Absolutely. 